My name's Andrew Henderson. I'm from England. I live in London. I'm 25 years old. I'm a professional freestyle footballer, five-time world freestyle champion. I started freestyle football in 2006 after seeing a video online. It really inspired me and I just got a ball, went outside and started training. I actually had a really bad experience. I broke my leg playing rugby and I got told that maybe I'll never be able to walk again. So that was a really difficult time for me. Freestyle definitely helped me recover from my injury because it made me feel more confident. Every time I learned a new skill, it made me more confident. Actually, I can get up, I can walk again, I can play sport again. You know, I can be the athlete that I wanted to be. I couldn't do any of the skills to begin with, but then after training over and over again, I developed all these skills and it just gets more and more fun the more skills you have to play with. To be a freestyle footballer, you have to train a lot. I train around three to five hours a day, five days a week. So there's a lot of practice, a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline, but uh, I enjoy it, I love it. It has enabled me to travel all around the world. I've been to over 50 countries now with freestyle. So it's been an amazing journey and I get to inspire kids from all over the world to do whatever they want to do in life and to know that you, there's no limits to what you can achieve if you put your heart to it and you, you work every day and you work really hard at it. I have the record for the fastest time to do 10 Maradona 7s. You have to learn four key points. You want to start by kicking it with your strong foot. I'm left footed, so I'll start with my left foot. You want to start nice and loose, kicking it from left to right. And it's all about soft touches, around about knee height. Then, second part, get up to your knees. This is all about bringing your knees up and just trying to keep them flat here at a 90 degree angle. Try and keep the same rhythm, because if you move too fast or too hard, the ball's gonna go up like that. The third area is the shoulders. This is one of the hardest parts of doing the Maradona 7. And then you can put them together. See if you can beat your record on the shoulder juggles. And then get that high for the head. Left foot, right foot, left knee, right knee, shoulder, shoulder, head. And that is classed as one Maradona 7. So I did 10 of those in 37 seconds, making it the fastest time to do 10 Maradona 7s. So I started doing rugby freestyle as well. I really started this because I used to be a rugby player and then when I had an injury I started doing freestyle football. So I guess, you know, it's more of a challenge doing it for rugby ball and I just wanted to challenge myself. So the difference between doing rugby freestyle and football freestyle is obviously using a rugby ball so it's much harder because the ball isn't round, which basically means when you kick it it can go off in any different direction, which makes it so much harder to control. Legs, shoulder width apart, you want to bend down, try and keep your back flat, Looking forward, bring the ball over your head, arms out, and that's the next door. That's step number one. Step number two, the neck flick. First, drop your head down, and as the ball starts to roll, you pick it up and flick the ball up in the air. And that's the neck flick. Final step is putting it all together, finishing by catching it back on your neck. It's all about cushioning the ball down, controlling it. And it looks like this. And that is the neck throw and catch. I hold the Guinness World Records title for the most neck throw and catches of a rugby ball in 30 seconds. It was really tough, really challenging, but I managed to get it. This was achieved on the set of Officially Amazing. It was really exciting. Just going up on the stage, knowing that I've got the cameras on me, gonna try this record, gonna really see if I can do it under the lights and I pulled it off, it was really tough. You're just standing there waiting for the results to be, to be shown. My heart's racing, the pressure's on me, so much suspense, and there's a build up there, and I'm just like, did I get it? I think I got it, maybe I didn't. When they told me that I was the Guinness World Records title holder, it meant so much to me. It's feeling like no other, it really is. So I definitely have my eye on some more Guinness World Records titles. I want to break the most around the world control tricks in one minute. There's many other titles that I want to get as well. And I'm just going to keep training as hard as I can. And hopefully you'll see me break some more records very soon. The day in the life of a freestyle world champion is pretty good. I mean, it's really nice when kids come up to me and they ask for pictures or to sign something or just to have a, a chat and ask some questions about freestyle or about anything else. You know, that's something that I'm very proud to have achieved. And it's really such a nice, honorable feeling to give back and to give advice to people that just want to learn, want to progress, need some motivation, need some confidence, that sort of thing. So it's, it's just such a, 
amazing thing, something that I didn't know that I would ever be able to do and I'm so grateful that I'm in this uh, very fortunate position. The day in the life. Ooh, uh, hello. <laughs> I love trains. 